Let me start with Dr. Rogers. We face two realities, certainly from a Chicago perspective, that a lot of the gun violence has been spawned by young people, gangs, and uh, communities that are awash in guns. Uh, you know what I'm speaking of, in the south side, west side of Chicago, and many other places. We also know that many of the shooters have a history, at least a history of adverse childhood experiences. Could you explain to us that issue of trauma and the likelihood that it will lead to shooters and victims? Thank you, Dr. Durbin. Um, many people know the phrase or have heard the phrase, hurt people hurt people. And work from John Rich and, John Rich and Ted Kerbin in uh, Philadelphia has shown repeatedly that people who have been uh, experiencing trauma from adverse childhood experiences of trauma, be it related to homelessness, um, food insecurity, and other uh, social challenges are more likely to be at risk of experiencing trauma in all those forms, be it um, child abuse, domestic violence, or other forms of trauma. Unfortunately, those who are, have been victims of gun violence, we also know have a higher risk of being re having repeated episodes of gun violence. And in many ways, those are the highest risk individuals. And we need to find ways of addressing that, those high risk individuals in economically depressed communities that are the highest risk for being victims of violence, but also perpetrators of violence. Now, doctor, I hate to interrupt you, but 18 months ago, that would have been an answer that would have been really spot on. Now I want you to add COVID-19 into the equation. Without a doubt, the COVID-19 pandemic, for a whole host of reasons related to social isolation, higher rates of unemployment, and other challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, has put incredible pressure on distressed communities. Higher rates of unemployment, higher rates of mental uh, on wellness, if you will, has perpetuated more gun violence. We've seen in the city of Chicago and many cities across the country, including LA and Philadelphia, 50% increase in the rate of gun violence. And we need more targeted interventions to try to address this problem. The problem, unfortunately, every day is not going away. We know that over 100 people will die today of gun-related homicides and suicides. So let me ask you this question. A child who has gone through these adverse childhood experiences and a childhood that none of us wish on anyone, is that child a lost soul? Is there any possible redemption in terms of medical treatment or mental health treatment? You know, I think we often, you know, every child is an opportunity and we need to invest in our children because those children are the ones who become adults and productive members of, of our society. Unfortunately, oftentimes, those trauma is not recognized and the impact of that trauma and intergenerational trauma, such as poverty and racism, is not addressed. Uh, by finding ways of actually providing trauma-informed care to individuals, be it in schools and in communities, we can have an impact and prevent needless in intentional gun violence and other forms of trauma. Thank you. Chief Spagnola, so far this year, 16 Chicago police officers have been either shot or shot at in the line of duty. Last week alone, three officers were shot and injured. We know what happened last night in Boulder. The policeman who responded to the scene, Eric Talley, father of seven, lost his life. Can you talk about the risk that law enforcement officers face while America is seeing record numbers of guns that are being sold and also, should a gun be sold to an unknown person without that person passing a criminal background check? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I believe strongly in the background check process. It's something that works quite well here in Connecticut. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to make sure that the person that's actually purchasing the gun has gone through uh, a, a pretty strict background check and all the databases have been checked to make sure that they are not a prohibited person. Uh, one of my greatest concerns for the men and women that, that service the community here in Waterbury is the amount of guns that they face on the street on a daily basis. Uh, our police officers are taking on an average of one to two guns a day, illegal guns a day, off the streets of Waterbury. Now, we're a community of about 115,000 people here in Connecticut, so I can only imagine uh, what my colleagues face in larger urban areas across the country. 
Um, you know, the, this is a this is a significant issue for us and, and a great concern for our officers uh, to be faced with these amount of weapons that are on the street. We've seen a huge increase and in spike in the amount of concealed weapons permits that have been applied for over a 300 percent increase in weapons, uh, weapons permits applied for here in the city over the course of 2020. And we've also seen a, a tremendous uptick in the amount of guns that have been sold. Uh, the issue that we, we have is that many guns uh, are purchased here and they are straw purchases. Uh, they end up in the hands of prohibited persons and then they're used in crimes of violence in our community. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Chief.